Hello students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. Baswa Prabhu Jirli from Banaras Hindu University. Today we are going to talk on the module on role of extension education in development. This module is part of the paper on concept and dimensions of extension education. The objective of this particular module is to understand the role of extension in development. Development initiatives in agriculture and allied sciences have a three pronged mandate of research, extension and teaching. Similarly, home science extension is also having the three pronged responsibility of teaching, research and extension. Teaching unlike the other disciplines is unseparable part. Also at postgraduate as well as the doctorate level we conduct research and as a part of the university system definitely they are involved in developing a new science or various dimensions of science that takes care of the research aspect. The activity of extension or providing extension services is an unique product of the universities which are generating these technologies. And the sciences like agriculture and allied sciences in which home science is one important component is also involved in this particular aspect. The concept of extension is closely associated with the development. In our previous lectures and the discussions on various aspects of extension, the concept of development has appeared again and again. And again we are re-emphasizing the issue that the extension is having the closest relationship with the concept of development because the outcomes of extension efforts are leading towards the basic purpose of extension is to kindle the action of development among various actors who are directly or indirectly contributing for development. The examples that we have observed so far since pre-independence era, the concept of extension is being used synonymous to development may it be the first experiment that we discussed under the heading of rural reconstruction scheme or up to the atma or various other programs in all these efforts extension is playing the dominant role another key important aspect with the extension is in this allied sciences of agriculture including agriculture the concept of extension remains same, only the technological aspects goes on changing. That is, the prefix is going to change in case of extension, but the suffix of extension is constant in nature. Hence, understanding the concept of extension is going to facilitate the process of technology transfer. Hence, with the process of technology transfer, we are intended to achieve development again and again we are repeating this particular issue. The question remains is how to understand the role of extension in development. We will find an answer to this particular question again by posing four important questions. The first one, what extension education does for its clients? When we say that the clients of extension. Let me ask you all, who are the clients of extension? Obviously, being a student of home science, you will unanimously say that it is the women, household women or the homemakers. Obviously, yes, you are right. But it is only one part of the answer. The rest of the part of the answer is having good number of other issues that you have not, you might not have addressed all. Apart from this homemakers or the housewives who are the clients of home science extension. 
obviously it is researchers in the discipline of home science, various subjects that home science deals with. Then the extension workers who are taking this homestead technologies to different corners, the input suppliers for the home science technologies, the financial input providers, the financial institutions, the banks, the non-governmental organizations, the governmental organizations, the development workers, all these are the range of the clients of extension. What type of educational activities or what type of initiatives the extension is providing to these different clientele is one of the major issues. The second question that I am putting before you is how extension education treats the innovations. Research process is developing good number of innovations, but is it that can we say that the outcomes of the research should be disseminated to the society as it is? If our answer is yes, we are grossly wrong. The reason behind is the innovations need certain treatment, certain treatment. Let me give you a simple example. Being a master student, so you will be going through a research paper in any subject of action, uh, home science on, there is an article in the newspaper on related to home science. Which one finds you more easy to understand? You as a student might be understanding the com contents of the research paper, but still there are many questions in your mind before understanding that. So, if this is the fate of a student who is specialized in a particular subject, so now think of a common man. Without treatment, we cannot leave any innovations or we cannot take any innovations to the people or our client system. So, hence extension education is involved in the treatment of innovations. What extension education does for extension workers? This is the most important aspect. Because the extension professionals also in need of a good number of inputs of extension. The extension researchers are going to add their to their knowledge base. That is what is the contribution of extension education for these extension workers. That also we will be discussing at length. Then what extension education does in general, overall development? to conceptualize the holistic development or the altruistic development, there are certain issues that we are going to address under this heading. The primary target of extension is its clients. In the most limited sense, we consider the clients of extension as farmers in case of agricultural extension, women in case of home sense extension and so on. It is not limited only to the farmers are women, the other service providers namely the extension service providers, input supply agencies, financial service providers, non-governmental agencies, researchers etc. are clients of extension. Each group of clients have a specific demand of information needs. Hence, let us analyze how extension education satisfies its clients. The first point comes under this is it imparts education leading to the behavioral change. Education can be considered as a panacea for addressing a range of problems. Education leads to bringing in desirable changes in knowledge, skill and attitude of clients. The moment we achieve the change in three elements, there is change in behavior. Once there is a desirable change in behavior, development is bound to follow. Hence, the extension always adopts educational approach to inculcate behavioral change, in turn achieve development. Extension emphasizes education through all possible medium, may it be formal education, non-formal education or informal education. In any way, there should be education and client should make a deliberate attempt to change the behavior. 
The second element is it is a process of informing people. We cannot transfer knowledge. We are transferring only information. It is the receiver who translates the information into knowledge by understanding the gained information. Extension uses all possible media mix for ensuring dissemination of appropriate information at appropriate time. The third intervention under how extension education uh, satisfies its clients include motivates clients to adopt innovation. Innovation is any new idea, technology, service, etc., which is perceived as new by the client. Innovation have the potential of initiating the development. Even though there are good number of innovations available, the process of motivation is essential to understand new idea. Once new idea makes a space in attitude of clients, there begins the process of development. Hence, we can say that existence of innovations is not sufficient to ensure development. The element of motivation is essential. There are various purposes behind motivation, namely increasing living standards, achieving social status, increasing production, satisfy the self, etc. Whatever may be the purpose, it needs to be satisfied. Extension provides an opportunity for the same. The fourth element that we are going to discuss is suggest alternatives for satisfaction of needs and optimum utilization of resources of people. The agencies involved in extension services generally promote a particular idea, technology, process, method, etc., which is part of extension strategy. Many times it is experienced that we are limited to certain options or particular aspect. Hence, the resultant is partial or non-adoption of the technology. To overcome this type of situation, extension favors the concept of suggesting all possible alternatives so that decision should be left to the end users. By giving limited or no option, the extension agencies are taking the decision. If the end users are not involved in decision making process, they will not accept the responsibility of adopting the technology also. This is what we have already seen in many approaches and how the modifications that were made under Atma model. Hence, by providing all possible alternatives, the extension makes them part of decision making process. With their involvement in decision making, they will accept the best possible. Hence, we see some changes. The similar effect is also experienced in optimum utilization of the resources also. Basically, many times we are not able to identify the resource as a resource. For example, since water is available abundantly, do we consider water as a resource? The moment we consider it as a resource, its utilization is going to be different. Similarly, information is also a resource, but we express our negligence most of the time for the information resources. If we accept information as a resource, we invest in obtaining it from valid source and make full use of them. The fifth element is it involves active participation of the clients. The basic uh, premise of extension service is involvement of people in planning, implementation and evaluation of events. Bottom up planning has always yielded positive results. Top down approach of the program planning implementation has been followed in many of the extension programs in early period, but they did not yield the anticipated results. Hence, the extension programs planned and implemented in the, in the post 1990s have an element of participation of people. Extension approaches adopted the bottom up process and yielded encouraging results. Participation is one of the principles of extension. If 
it is followed in practical sense programs are going to be successful the sixth element that we are going to discuss is improves the decision making ability of clients the concept of educational approach discussed at the beginning of the issue was uh, has the direct relationship here education is the process of bringing desirable changes these changes include the change in knowledge skill and attitude these changes are going to add to the decision making ability according to dr apj abdul kalam the secret of success is right decision but the issue is how we take the right decisions it comes with the experience again another question remains is how do we get experience we gain experience from our bad decisions if we need to understand it to take the decision if it is good it will give you success if it is bad it will add to your experience the seventh element that uh, we need to understand is it develops people's own program this is the ultimate goal of extension education but the question is how to achieve the goal there are methodologies specialized in extension science to achieve the goal the ultimate question to be answered is why it is not happening at the field level if the ultimate stakeholder has to be empowered to develop program means lot of educational inputs are essential are people interested in educational inputs do they retain the acquired educational inputs to what extent they understand taught things and so on there are good number of issues comes in between to address the idea of developing people's own program hence extension is an educational process to empower community at regular intervals there will be some additions in, and deletions but the process is continuous in nature the process of developing people's own program was observed in majority of the watershed approaches since the community is getting immediate benefits which are sustainable in nature people's participation in uh, is comparatively high similar attempts were also being planned and implemented under atma model wherein involvement of various sections of the community is ensured in program planning implementation in the days to come there will be more participation of community due to enhanced awareness and realization of community regarding the benefits of participation the eighth element that we are going to discuss is it creates congenial learning situation learning situation consists of learner teacher subject matter physical facilities and teaching materials mere existence of all these elements is not sufficient there should be dynamic relationship that is two way relationship between all the elements of learning situation that what we have spelt now if there is any sort of uh, dilution in any one of the element its results are visible in outputs extension education system understand the importance of learning situation and hence takes care of the issues meticulously if the elements are not taken care of it will yield the results accordingly ninth and the last element under this particular heading is it builds the confidence through action and conviction developing conviction promotion of action and ensuring satisfaction of clients are the key elements of extension education efforts the steps of teaching include attention interest desire conviction action and satisfaction the same steps hold good for extension education also developing conviction in clients means making the clients understand about the issue under consideration each and every client is different in capacities to understand extension makes all possible efforts to turn 
the stones and uh, to reach the unreached action is uh, more of motivation and extent of understanding of the issue at conviction level once the client enters into action uh, it is not an end in itself even after that there may be chances of discontinuation hence conviction plays the key role here okay friends in the earlier part we had an elaborated discussion on how extension education is going to impart the information for its clients under various headings we discussed the issues at length with that background now we'll move on to how extension education treats the innovations there are definite methodologies of extension for giving appropriate treatment to these innovations the first one that we are going to discuss is through the field trials and evaluation i hope you remember the various types of tri trials that we have discussed under the concept of krishi vigyan kendra that is definitely going to help you to understand this particular issue and at the same time we are going to conduct different types of evaluation the second issue is through communication adoption and diffusion the communication as you are already aware wherein we are trying to establish the commonness between the source and the receiver and we are trying to influence him to accept that particular technology to make that particular technology for his day to day life or in applications at the same time all these innovations are being disseminated among the members of the social system that is what is the area diffusion deals with the third point that we are going to discuss under how extension education treats innovations is through strategic combination of workable strategies because when we work with the communities or when we work with the innovations and the technologies there are good number of workable strategies that we need to develop it that is how we try to put them into test and take it to the masses the last but not the least point under this subheading is through providing facts figures for consideration of consequences it is not that we are going to discuss only the positive aspects of the innovations there might be certain negative aspects as well as what are the consequences that it is going to generate based on these inputs the decision is left to the end user so that he can accept the technology or he can ask for modification of the technology based on his requirements or the perceived consequences that is being provided by the extension education now with these four of uh, the different issues that we'll be dealing at length one by one now let us understand how extension education treats the innovation there are different ways the first way that we are going to discuss is through field trials and evaluation the technology developed through the process of research which is promising of producing encouraging results needs certain treatment before it is disseminated among the large masses the treatment process is known as field trial or evaluation conditions prevailed in laboratory while conducting the research are totally different from where the technology is going to be adopted under such circumstances what is the way out evaluate the technology developed under practical situation with the help of beneficiaries through this process of conducting field trials we get the feedback from end users as well as researchers gets an opportunity to include necessary modification in the technology also the field trials serve as nodal centers for dissemination of technology since extension believes in learning by doing and seeing is believing field trials and evaluation is the best methodology the extension adopts the second way in which 
the innovations are treated is through communication, adoption and diffusion. Treatment of innovations is key process in technology adoption. Innovations are communicated to encourage adoption among the social system. The basic purpose of communication is to develop commonness as far as the technology under consideration. The process of adoption is more complicated because the purposeful action is essential in case of adoption. The steps of adoption are similar to the steps of teaching as discussed earlier. The steps of adoption include awareness, interest, evaluation, trial and adoption. The respondent after becoming aware of technology essentially goes through the process of evaluation and trial. They are the key issues before adoption of innovation. In our day-to-day -day life also, we evaluate the things by asking the opinion of other fellow beings before adoption. May it be simple issues like buying a shirt or of a particular company, we ask the opinion of other person who has already purchased regarding the quality, price, shades, size, etc. When we go uh, to a shop for a particular product, we take a trial also. Based on the feedback of our near and dear ones and based on the experiences of trial, we finally go for adoption of a technology. Similarly, extension also takes up all these events before taking any innovation to the ultimate end users. The element of diffusion also deals with the time innovations are to be taken to the end users in the specified period of time. Then we recognize the process as diffusion. Otherwise, it becomes part of communication. The third way in which treatments are given to innovations include through strategic combination of workable strategies. Evaluating the innovation at the field level is one aspect of treatment of innovation. The other part include deciding about the need of the innovation in a particular locality for a particular community etc. Apart from this, considering the alternatives available and combining possible alternatives with the existing and establishing the blend with the indigenous processes or the methods. This can only be achieved through strategic combination of workable strategies. That is how extension agencies take care of innovations. The fourth element under this is through providing facts, figures for consideration of consequences. It is a form of feedback to the extension system as well as the research system. Feedback plays a pivotal role in treatment of innovations. On the other hand, we can say that without feedback, we cannot treat the innovation in the desired manner. Learning from the past experiences and providing appropriate and timely feedback to the extension agencies facilitate the process of treatment of innovations. Now coming to one of the another important factor, what extension education does for extension workers. The extension agencies are having multiple responsibilities, namely establishing two-way linkages between research, clients, input supply agencies, financial institutions, etc. Apart from this, there is a link between agencies, that is, the extension workers. The extension workers also need inputs from various uh, extension agencies. Here, we can have two distinct categories, namely the extension service providers and extension educationists. Both these units need extension inputs for better performance. Hence, what extension education does for extension workers that we are going to discuss now. The first element is it establishes the job performance. Extension establishes the standards according to which the tasks are to be performed. May it be conducting result demonstration, method demonstration, frontline demonstration, training program, workshop, meeting, 
etc which are the regular activities of extension surveys and extension education needs the performance standards for all these the extension education provides these performances standards and makes the things happen the second element is it helps in achieving the team spirit in all the evaluation studies conducted in different parts of the country and abroad the common finding of evaluation studies are there is a greater need for extension methodologies and skills for stimulating group action whether the technology is developed ultimately it needs to go to the society in society man is not in isolation he is always in group also he cannot accomplish anything in isolation there needs to be group action which needs the team spirit extension methodologies emphasize on group action may it be farmers level or extension service provider level extension education is level or the researcher level it becomes more relevant in societies like india the third intervention is it assists in making extension workers organization oriented binding the personnel for the task to be accomplished is the primary task of extension organization once the personnel become organization oriented rest of the things are taken care of automatically the fourth intervention is trains personnel as an inbuilt and continuous process training is an inbuilt process of extension activities there are different types of trainings that we come across pre service training uh, induction training in service training etc depending on the need and type of training will be accommodated administered the fifth element is it develops the morale of extension workers and make them highly professional with the inception of training and visit system the issue of professionalism is emphasized making use of appropriate methodologies in reaching the unreached and providing timely services with the help of qualified personnel is nothing but professionalism hence extension education emphasizes on extension workers being highly professional means providing appropriate services which will address the problems of the clients with the professional services there should be certain changes these changes are referred to as development the ultimate goal of extension is to achieve development before we come to the conclusion let us look into what extension education does in general it develops strengthens and organizes groups institutions and people to achieve their objectives in general extension favors the institutions institution building process if the institutions are strong it provides the base for further events when we look into the approaches of extension like cooperative societies group approach participatory approach self help group farmers interest group etc all these efforts are aiming at building an institution through these institutions develop or promote the development thinking and ultimately achieve the intended development so in this direction the extension always in support of institution and building this institutions the second element is it develops the leadership in local professional situation there are various types of leadership styles generally we identify only the political leaders as the leaders but apart from that we can have various other leaders like professional leaders prominent talent leaders opinion leaders religious leaders elected leaders selected leaders etc it depends on the purpose of activity that we are taking up extension helps to identify the qualities of leadership which are talent in people given an opportunity they can sharpen their qualities and be the leaders in 
their respective areas. Many times we come across the situations like people are unable to identify the qualities that they are already having. The moment they become aware of those qualities, definitely they are going to be the leaders in their respective areas. The third element that we are going to discuss is it acquaints the planners, policy makers and administrators with local conditions and local technologies suited to it. Extension believes in establishing strong forward as well as backward linkages with institutions and end users. Providing feedback to the research and extension agencies and front feeding of appropriate information to the interested target groups are the key issues for extension educationists as well as service providers. The fourth element under what extension education does in general is it provides sufficient data for developing plans and for coordination of activities. Data is an input provided to appropriate agencies at appropriate time so that the things under plan can be strengthened. Availability of data itself is a major issue for the planners. Hence, extension plays a key role in generation and management of data. The fifth element under this broad heading is it gives direction and educational packages for adoption and diffusion and also provides communication media mix for innovation and evaluation. Since the beginning of the discussion of, uh, on extension, we have been emphasizing that extension education interventions intended to bring desirable changes in the behavior. Adoption and diffusion are the processes intended to bring the behavioral changes and the communication media mix is a channel for the intended process. Okay friends, now we have discussed various issues regarding the role of extension education in development. To conclude issue, uh, this particular issue with some lines, in a nutshell, extension takes care of all prerequisites necessary for ensuring development. The primary focus of extension shall be the client's way, the present, uh, uh, the processes include the behavioral change, providing information, adoption of innovation and so on. Extension provides treatment to the innovations so that the end users can derive the highest benefits of these innovations. The purpose of innovations is to insert necessary modifications. So that is why we are going for the treatment, modifications and innovations so that it is widely accepted among the members of the society. Also. It provides a platform for extension workers to sharpen the, uh, their skills and abilities. With all these things, we can anticipate the holistic and the altruistic development of the society and this is how the extension is contributing for the cause of development. Thank you.